In many blogs on Twitter and communities, the discussions about the best state management techniques in React are very frequent. For this reason, I decided to prepare this video by creating a short guide to analyze the most common strategies for local and global state management in React applications. I want to point out that I will not use TypeScript in many slides just because I prefer to focus on techniques and not complicate the code contained in the presentation. Hi, my name is Fabio Biondi, I'm a front-end instructor from Italy and I love both Angular and React. Usually I create my content in Italian only, but I decided to create videos in English to improve it and try to reach more people. Anyway, I hope you will like my channel and don't forget to subscribe it. Let's start with some of the most used techniques in React to manage the local state. The most traditional example to manage a local state is the creation of a stateful component that shares the state to its children by passing properties. Through the use state hook, we can define the state of a component and pass it to the children in the form of properties using a one-way flow. This mechanism is also known by the term drilling props. Children components can update the state in the parent passing down a callback, again through drilling props. And this callback will invoke the set state in parent component, in this case the set count. So the parent component state is updated with a new value and it will be rendered again. All components that we have used in the parent template can now receive the update of the state as property. I know that many developers don't like drilling props, but I think the code is much more clear, well documented and the data flow is much more understandable. So we can adopt a different strategy, the composition. In this scenario, your components will be directly used in the parent template and they will have direct access to the state without needing to be passed. In fact, we see that our child component receives the properties from the app component and the parent doesn't need to pass them using drilling props. The trick to make it work is simple. We create our children components directly into the JSX of the stateful component and they will use the special children property to create a composition of components. It's the same concept we use in Vue.js or web components called slot or the angular content projection by using the ng content component. UseReducer is probably one of the less used hook, but it's very useful when we start to use too many use state in a component and above all when these states are related to each other. Imagine you have three states, cost, quantity and total, that is the result of the multiplication between quantity and cost. First, we use the user reducer hook, which accepts two parameters, the reducer to manage the state update based on the action and the initial value. It returns a tuple, where the first value is the value of the state, while the second one is a dispatch function to emit an action that will be used to notify the state update. When the UI has to update the state, it will not do anything else that invokes the dispatch function, passing the action type, a string, and the payload, that is the value. The reducer is a simple function that receives the current state and the action we have invoked and returns the new state based on the action. In this case, when we invoke the update quantity action, the reducer will only update the quantity property and consequently the total. And the same happens to the update cost action. Let's move on to another tool provided by React, the context. I have read dozens of articles that say we don't need state manager because we can use context instead. This is not entirely true. Let's analyze how context works. Context is a feature of React designed to share data between components without the need to explicitly pass properties. In the example, we see a context wrapping a parent component. This parent component also contains one or more children in its own template. The child components can then directly retrieve the value of the context using the useContext hook. So the context is used to share our state, in the example value, created by the useState hook. When we update the state through the setValue function, children components can use the useContent hook to get the latest value and they are rendered again each time it changes. 
Often the context is used as a global state manager, creating a context that wraps the entire application and transports an object. However, for each change, even one property of the state, we will render all the components of the application that use that context, even if they don't use that portion of the state. It's not the best. This can generate many performance problems and for this reason, my advice is to use context only for data that not often change, such as a theme management, language, a global project configuration, and so on. One of the strategies I recommend to reduce the problem of unnecessary rendering is to use context to manage specific branches of the application. In this example, we have two branches of components and each is managed by its own context. This means that when we update the state of a context of a branch, we will not impact the renders of the performance of the other branches. Context abuse, however, makes the application difficult to control and most importantly, difficult to optimize if there are performance issues. But there is also another problem. We have seen that a child component can recover the value of the context. But how can update it? Simple, you can't. Except using drilling props or composition as I already showed you in the previous examples. One strategy we can use in a child to be able to directly update the value of a context is to use an user reducer hook and two contexts. A context can be used to share the state and make it accessible to the children, and another context will contain the reference to the dispatch functions instead that children can use to invoke actions. Anyway, the performance issues remain, and even if we organize the application over multiple contexts, then we will have other problems related to the maintainability of the code and a lot of confusion. In the next video, we will see some of the most famous state managers for the global state management, useful for example to share the state across components on different branches of the application, or when we use a router and we need to share something between several pages. In any case, the same techniques are also very useful for managing the local state of one or more components of the same branch, for example in a particularly complex view composed of many components. Because it makes a communication between components very simple, they are optimized to avoid useless renders and some of them provide great tools for debugging. Let me know if you liked this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel and turn on the notification to stay up to date of the latest videos. Bye.